This module will guide you in how to use the Assessment of Reasoning tool to assess a learner's ability to articulate a complete problem representation. A problem representation is a concise synthesis of the clinical problem that needs to be solved and usually answers the following questions. Who is the patient? The information may include demographics, relevant previous medical history, family history, social history, and medications. What are the key relevant findings? These include clinical symptoms, signs, and data. What is the time course? This includes duration and temporal relationship. A problem representation frames the patient's presentation by focusing on important elements of the clinical findings. An example for a well-structured problem representation is Joe Smith, a 56-year-old man with CHF who smokes, takes aspirin and lisinopril, and lives alone on a boat with abdominal pain, right upper quadrant tenderness, and leukocytosis. Semantic qualifiers are adjectives that provide details about a given symptom. It helps qualify the meaning of the symptom. For example, acute progressive abdominal pain triggers a very different differential diagnosis than chronic intermittent abdominal pain. In general, it is useful to limit the inclusion of negative findings in the articulated problem representation to ensure brevity. However, when a negative finding dramatically alters the differential diagnosis, such as a febrile, it should be included. To solve a problem correctly, the clinician must understand the question being asked. In diagnostic reasoning, the equivalent of understanding the question being asked is defining the problem representation. A well-synthesized problem representation is important because it facilitates the recognition of clinical patterns or syndromes and guides the search for the diagnoses or illness scripts to be considered as the solution for the clinical problem. Let's look at a case now to show you how to use the ART to assess the problem representation of a trainee. Ms. Henderson is a 20-year-old woman who developed shortness of breath and chest pain after returning from a vacation to Spain. Her pain developed suddenly one morning while seated at her desk. It is right-sided and worse with a deep breath. She has no medical history and takes a daily oral contraceptive pill. She smokes half a pack of cigarettes daily and drinks alcohol on weekends. Her temperature and blood pressure are normal. The heart rate is 96 beats per minute and the oxygen saturation is 89% on room air. Her physical exam is otherwise normal. The chest x-ray is normal and the EKG reveals sinus tachycardia 106 with a right bundle branch block. There is no old EKG for comparison. This is an example of a high performer which you would mark as complete on the ART. Ms. Henderson is a healthy 20-year-old smoker on oral contraceptives with acute dyspnea, pleuritic chest pain, and hypoxia with clear lungs and a right bundle branch block. The high performer gives a concise summary with patient information such as being a smoker using oral contraceptives, describing symptom information such as pleuritic chest pain, and including highly selected data such as lung exam and conduction system changes. This problem representation allows the listener to trigger the most likely diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. This is an example of a low performer which you would mark as partial on the ART. Ms. Henderson is a 20-year-old smoker with new chest pain with tachycardia and EKG changes who is also short of breath but is not wheezing. The lower performer's assessment is consistent with pulmonary embolism, but there is nothing in the choice of patient information or a chest pain description or a detailed EKG description that would lead the listener to prioritize pulmonary embolism over any other cause of dyspnea or chest pain and it doesn't mention the critical sign of hypoxia. Teachers should request a clear problem representation and coach or model it for learners who are learning this important step in the reasoning process. The problem representation should synthesize the relevant clinical findings concisely to clearly define the patient's problem. It consists of relevant epidemiology, risk factors, and semantically qualified clinical findings, including laboratory and study results. An inaccurate or incomplete problem representation can lead to misdiagnosis because the clinician will solve the wrong problem.